Hi, welcome back to 17 Square Meters Garden. Hope that you are all doing well. In today's video, I want to share with you some ideas for beautiful plants that you can grow on your balcony, even in winter. So all the plants that I'm gonna share with you today, they are evergreen and they are really winter hardy. So as you know, some plants, they lose their leaves for the winter time, they are deciduous, but there are some that keep their foliage year round and these are evergreen plants. Uh, it can be trees, it can be shrubs, it can be herbaceous perennials. So some of those plants I'm gonna share with you today, plants that I grow on my balcony. Um, of course, there's so many to choose from and even if a plant is not evergreen, if it's deciduous, so if it drops their leaves, uh, for the winter time, there are still so many beautiful ones that provide interest that, for example, have colorful bark, colorful stems, or that produce berries. Um, but today I want to focus only on those evergreen plants. And as I mentioned, they are all really, really winter hardy, so you can grow them even if you live in a very cold climate. I do realize that a lot of garden centers and a lot of nurseries are closed at this time of year and they reopen in spring. So you may not be able to find those plants at this time uh, of year. But if you do go to the garden center in spring or in summer, uh, you may just walk by those plants and you may not even pay attention to them because they don't look amazing compared to all the beautiful flowers that are available during the season. But knowing that those plants provide beautiful winter interest, you might still want to consider buying them. If you are a beginner gardener, you still may not know how to tell if a plant is winter hardy or not. So let me just quickly explain how it works. So the world is divided into 13 growing zones or 13 hardiness zones from 1 to 13. 1 being the coldest, 13 being the warmest. But this only takes in consideration how cold it gets in winter, not how hot it gets in summer. For example, in zone 13 it can get as hot in summer as in zone 8 or 9, but winters are significantly different, like in zone 13 the winters are really really mild, while in zone 7, 6 the temperatures drop below freezing. So cold hardiness, as the name says, it only takes in consideration how cold it gets in winter. So how to check this? You write in Google your location, let's say you live in Germany, you write Germany hardiness zones and it will show you the map of Germany with different zones and um, you will notice that there are quite differences, for example, some places are colder than others. Uh, so based on where you live, you can tell what hardiness zones you're in. And then, let's say you are growing hookeras and you don't know if you should protect hookeras for the winter or not, you write in Google hookera hardiness zones and it will tell you that hookera can successfully be grown between zone 4 and 9. So what that means is hookera is really winter hardy, it can take temperatures from the zone 4, which I believe is like minus 20 degrees Celsius or even more. But it also has that upper limit, which is zone 9. So it means if you live in a growing zone which is above 9, the winters are not cold enough for that plant to successfully grow because some plants they need that cold winter time to slow down their processes to be able to perform well next year. So do check your growing zone because this way you will be able to also check your plants if they are appropriate for your growing zone, if you should protect them for winter or not. The hellebores are amazing plants, they are evergreen and they bloom which is amazing because there's really not a lot of plants that bloom in winter and hellebores are one of them. Um, there are different species and different cultivars and um, they bloom anywhere in between December and spring, like March, let's say. Uh, mine blooms as early as December, so it's been two months that it's blooming and as you can see, it's absolutely amazing. Um, very winter hardy, zone four through nine. Some of them are a little bit less winter hardy, they are zone six. I have recently made a video how to grow them successfully in pot. I will link them uh, link the video in the description and in the card so you can watch that if you want a little bit more information of how to take care properly of hellebores. So the next plant on the list is Euonymus fortunii. This cultivar is called the Harlequin. Beautiful variegated leaves and it also has um, like pink discoloration let's say in, in winter. It's the cold temperatures that promote that pink um, tinge. On, on the leaves. If you write in Google, you will find so many beautiful varieties. This is just an example that I have. They are so versatile, you can provide them with a trellis and they will climb. You can shape them into topiaries or you can just let them be bushy and wild. They can be grown in full sun to part shade. It's fairly pest and disease free. The only pest that I have ever found, and that's very recently, is Euonymus scale. So I will show you because I have Euonymus scale right now. So the white insects that you see are male and they are found on the leaves while females are hiding on stems and they are brown. 
So this insect has two generations within the year. It reproduces in spring and in fall. If you have light infestations, you really don't have to worry too much. You can either just let them be or you can prune the affected stems. You don't have to like take uh, heavy pesticides and chemicals and to spray your plant down and to nuke all of those uh, insects. That's really unnecessary. If you do have a heavy infestation, then you can react, of course. The uranium, uranium scale will not really kill your plant, but it, it can definitely affect its growth and, of course, the way it looks. Um, but the best time to do it uh, is either in spring or in fall, when the new generation of scale hatches. That's when they are the most vulnerable. I will make a video about pest and pest control uh, in spring, so I will talk more about this in another video because, of course, that's a very, very um, large subject and there's so much to say that um, I don't want to address this in this video. Next plant on the list is my favorite, it's hookura. There's so many beautiful hookuras, they come in all kinds of colors, they can grow anywhere from full sun to full shade. The darker the leaves, the more sun it can take. They are absolutely amazing plants. I have seven plants, I had seven plants of five different varieties. Uh, they have evergreen leaves, so they provide interest year-round. Beautiful bloom stalks, late spring, early summer, which attract smaller pollinators. They are not toxic to pets. So as I said, I had seven plants, but I have only six or five right now. So there's quite uh, a few pests that can uh, cause trouble. There are, of course, slugs and snails that munch on their leaves. There are caterpillars. And there are also wine weevil grubs. I'm growing plants on this balcony since seven years and never had any problems with wine weevil grubs until this year. So what happened is my hookera started to look a little bit wilted. So I've been watering my plants, my hookeras, and uh, they didn't bounce back. One day I came to my hookera and I saw some dead leaves. So I started to pull the dead leaves and as I pulled the leaves, I pulled the entire plant with it. I was completely stunned because the plant didn't have any roots on it, like there was no roots at all. Uh, because wine weevil grubs, there are little grubs that eat the roots of your plants and it can affect many plants. I was able to save most of my plants, so that just goes to show you that this plant had completely, completely no roots. Um, and it rooted in uh, and it survived and it's now thriving. Next category of plants are ornamental grasses, and I absolutely love ornamental grasses. I have a little collection of them. So these three are grasses, but this one is actually a herbaceous perennial, uh, even though it looks like a grass, but I'm going to talk about it in a moment. So they are amazing. I think that um, it's such a fun plant to have. It changes a little from, you know, all the flowers and all the leafy plants. So this amazing plant is called Festuca glauca, blue fescue grass. Uh, zone 4 through 8. So normally it's categorized to, as a full sun plant. I'm growing it in part shade and even I had it in full shade all summer. So the only difference is that if you were to place it in a full shade, situ full sun situation, it's gonna have more like silvery, bluish color and in the full shade or part shade it just doesn't bloom and the color is a little bit darker. It's not toxic to humans or to pets. This one is called Carex oshimensis evergold. Um, zone 5 through 9, so a little bit less winter hardy, but still zone 5, um, that's pretty hardy plant. It makes me think to that houseplant, uh, Chlorophytum, so if you are a fan of Chlorophytum and you have one growing inside, uh, you can now plant one on your balcony as well, something that will remind you of this plant, but something that can survive winter uh, outside, so very, very cool, beautiful plant with variegated leaves. Uh, it's not toxic to humans nor animals, uh, but this one likes uh, to be a little bit more moist than this one. So this one can tolerate draft. draft. This one prefers the soil a little bit moist uh, and it can grow as well in full sun to part shade. So this one is one of my favorites, Carex flagellifera. Um, it's yet again less winter hardy than this one. It's zone 6 through 9. But there are really different Carex varieties available. As you can see, this one is Carex and this one is Carex as well. There's a lot of different ones to choose from, so uh, you can definitely find something that is suitable for your conditions. It's very draft tolerant as well. This one, the last one, is Ophiophagon Niger Sense, zone 6 through 11. So this one can go up really far, so you can grow it in more tropical, more warm climates. So full sun to, I think, all the way to full shade. It's just the difference is that in full sun, uh, it will be, the color will be better. It will be darker, really black, beautiful color. In um, full shade or in part shade, it's gonna turn more green or purple-ish. Uh, and mine is still very, very small. It's gonna grow bigger a little. It can grow um, like 20 centimeters tall and 30 centimeters wide. Do 
next plants that I want to talk about are these, uh, which is Hebe and Gulteria procumbens. This little thing is the most resistant plant of all of the plants that I just showed you today. Zone 3 through 9. Uh, Gulteria is actually used um, for medicinal purposes. Uh, it's I believe they make essential oils out of them, produces berries in fall and they remain on the plant throughout the winter all the way till uh, spring. So Gulteria comes in different uh, colors of berries, there are different species, I have grown pink and white ones in the past. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind with Gulteria is uh, Gulteria procumbens is hermaphrodite, so it's self-pollinating, so that means uh, it doesn't need uh, a male plant in order to pollinate it so that it can produce those berries. But there are females, uh, female Gulterias, so it means that if you would want it to produce berries again, you will need to have a male plant to pollinate it. Both Gulteria and this Hebe are excellent if you have not a lot of space, if you just have a windowsill or small pots on your balcony. Um, next, Hebe. So I created this little composition and I said that this uh, is called Hebe Green Boys but actually I checked it after and Green Boys is a plant breeder because when I checked on the page of the plant breeder they just say that they are called Green Boys and they produce Hebe's but there is another Hebe that is very similar to this one which is called uh, Green Globe Hebe but there's so many Hebe varieties out there Hebe's that you may be more familiar with they have larger leaves, they're a little bit bigger, they bloom from late summer all the way through winter. They have beautiful spikes of purple flowers. There are ones with variegated leaves or with just plain green leaves. There's so many beautiful ones to choose from. I hope that you liked this proposition today of evergreen plants that you can grow on your balcony in winter. Maybe it gave you some ideas, I really hope so, and that you will be motivated to plant something on your balcony even in winter. Maybe not this one, but at least the next one. And in case if you are wondering what is this gorgeous plant that you can see in my frame that I didn't mention, it's a chrysanthemum burnt orange. So normally chrysanthemums don't bloom at this time of year, they bloom in fall, but I bought it recently at the grocery store. Uh, and chrysanthemums are also winter hardy, but they are not evergreens. I mean, they are evergreen for me because I live in fairly mild climate, I live in uh, zone 8b. But uh, chrysanthemums are perennials, so you can keep them from year to year. I noticed this one um, at the local grocery store and I just picked it up because it's so beautiful. The flowers look like fireworks. Really amazing plant and it's been minus 5 degrees Celsius and it's still holding up pretty well. So maybe uh, also a plant to think about for the next um, fall winter season. But anyway, thank you for joining me today. I really hope that you enjoyed it and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.